watching Sports Beat. All right, the beat rolls on as we break down the Utes and Cougars from last night in Provo. Our guys are here. Yeah, we're now joined by Christian Cox and David Nixon, a Ute and a Cougar, ready to break down another rivalry game. Let's start with a big night from Tyler Huntley. He was sensational. Man, Tyler Huntley, he's the real deal. You can see exactly why they went with him over Troy Williams. He's ultra efficient, and he had a great night. Well, last week against North Dakota, we saw a play where he's stuck in the pocket, knew he's about to get hit, and here's a perfect example right here. He's getting bared down on by Taki Taki, but delivers a blow, but he's able to still deliver the ball off his front foot and throws a bomb and leads the receiver into the ball. That's what's so perfect about the throw, right? Not only does he stay in there, he leads C.O.C. Wilson ahead of him, and he throws it 54 yards while being drilled, comes up with a huge play for Utah to get some momentum in their favor, and he had a completion percentage over 70%. He, had all, he threw for over 300 yards, had a heck of a night. And BYU, this is one of the plays that got pressure on him, but they never were able to get a sack the entire night. Zero sacks for BYU's defense. Yeah, and that's a real, that's a real problem. Where Utah improved, right? Against North Dakota, you didn't get a, you only had one sack, one interception. But Mo Kafisi had a heck of a game. And let's take a look. Did, what did we just watch? What, what did happen here? I was on the field, and I, everyone kind of the whole stadium thought, Where, what happened? No, it was a batted down ball. And next thing you know, you see a couple guys run at the ball. But you're going to see basically... It comes off, hits BYU's guy, Keenan Norman, in the helmet, and bounces right in to, uh, to the hands, Mokafisi's hands, and gets the interception. I mean, this was a big play. It allowed Utah to be right down there in the red zone. And great awareness, right? He corrals it. He's engaged with a tackle, and he's getting blocked, and he somehow comes up with a big play. But the other thing that Utah had a lot of success with were pressures, right? You have to get big havoc plays, as Coach Whittingham talks about, interceptions, you gotta get sacks, and Chase Hansen was relentless. This is one of those plays that Tanner's gotta recognize Chase Hansen coming off the edge. Utah does a great job of shifting the line. It's, it's a field blitz, yeah. field dog. And, and Chase Hansen, you, you have two blockers who are both tied in in the H-back, are both gonna release to the routes. And Chase Hansen comes untouched, arguably the best player on Utah's defense, and you leave him untouched. Yeah, and when you have two players releasing, this is on Tanner, this is on Tanner Mingham. He's got to deliver the ball quick. He's got to realize that he's got protection away. And he's got a blitzer off the edge. And not only did they run a great play, the slanters ran it perfectly. They slanted underneath, gave Chase a perfect lane, and that's the rest was, of the system. Was it a fumble or was it not? You know, it looked like a fumble, but it, was, it, it, went, it went forward enough for me. This was, was, this was definitely was a 50-50 call. I, I, uh, I, it was overruled and, and came back as an incomplete pass, but it, that, was a, that was a big play. And let's look at the touchdown that Utah came up with, right? Get, got four field goals uh, from Matt Gay. You look at the only touchdown. It was a broken it was a play. Broken, busted play. Uh, but how about the athleticism from Tyler Huntley? Yeah, this, and this is, like you said earlier, this is why Utah decided to go with Huntley. But basically, you're going to have Zach Moss go to the wrong side. He goes left instead of right. And so Huntley's just, you know, doing a little play action to, to nobody there. And then what happens, though, is Huntley reads it. He says, okay, I've got a couple defenders on my left. I know I've got a seal block on my right side. Let me cut it back, use my athleticism, and is able to dive into the end zone. So good field awareness, good vision by Huntley to cut it back and result in the, the only touchdown for the night. And what you may or may not have seen is the actual tackle running his way out. Jackson Barton, Uatafe, wash him all the way down. That's what creates this lane, just enough space for Tyler Huntley to get through. And those, the big touchdown for Tyler Huntley at this point. So let's flip it over, right? We, we, we want to look at BYU and, and they found their running back that they need to get some yardage. Kalani Mitch in the postgame press conference, we did. We finally found our running back. It's been a, the running game this year, you know, it's no secret, has been abysmal. But here you see Ula Tolotel, who's actually a Wisconsin. He committed to Wisconsin out of high school, transferred after his mission back to BYU. And, and what Kalani said, this is going to be our feature back. We're going to ride him from here on out. And he showed why. He had five carries for 25 yards, average five yards a carry. But BYU's offensive line, you have to give credit to them, the big boys up front. Look at this push. The surge itself was what really set up this dive right here by Tolotau. The big boys up front were able to get a good And this push. is where the pro style works, right? You can wash down. You get a two-yard push from your tackle and your guard. Opens it up a perfect lane. But this was a big score, right? This gets you six a, a, to six. About one of the only bright six spots of the offense, right? right? But then you get down to the defense, right? You talk about pursuit. You get a big play from Fred Warner, Bronson Kafusi, tr Kafusi trailing. You got to look at the, the, the score at this point, right? Utah had 450 yards offense. BYU's defense kept them from scoring a lot, and this was one of these big plays. Yeah, BYU's offense was was doing nothing with the ball. BYU's defense comes out with that big play, the turnover. Then right here, the fourth and one. This got some momentum back in BYU's favor. And I like what Butch Powell said. He said, listen, this week we were, fo we were focusing on pursuing to the ball, everybody to the ball. You saw the punch out earlier. And here this fourth down. And we go back to busted play on the goal line by Utah. Here's another interesting play. I'm not sure if it's a bust. You have a kind of a dual option. You have pulling guard and tackle. 
But then you're going to have the tight end and H-back pulling up top. And so it's kind of a dual read for Hundley. He gives it to Moss. And BYU's defense was not tricked on yeah, this play. Moss, Moss has two guys in his face. He's got Corbin Kafusi who's getting penetration. And then you got Hadley cleaning up late. When you're pulling two guys away, typically when you're pulling, you're going to follow that. Comes up with a huge play for BYU, gets them back in the game. But let's look at the let's look at the pain. Oh, let's man. let's really let's put some salt in the put wounds the dagger of, in this of, game. The B, of the BYU fans, right? We're talking about drops, yeah. pain. Oh, the pain is real. So BYU, despite how terribly they played all throughout the game, they had an opportunity in the game, and there you see the miss pass by Levi Hifo. This one initially looked like another drop, but when you look at it from this angle, you're going to see that. It's really a good punch by, by the, the you see his, corner. You see that left hand punches the ball out. It's not a necessary drop. That's great technique there. Still, it was one of those plays where BYU was, wasn't able to capitalize. I think that was kind of the, 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 the theme of the game for BYU is they had opportunities. They couldn't quite cash in on them. And, of course, Utah goes away seven in a row. Goes on seven. Uh, tough, tough, tough to say. Maybe eight that, next tough year. Maybe nine. Who, Who knows? knows? Who knows? He's Sorry, David. Who's moment, counting? Man, yeah. I'm not <laughs> counting. I don't care. <laughs> Admittedly, both teams, even the youths with a win, they got a lot to clean up, don't of they? Of course. Yeah, right. lots of work. Most forgettable rivalry game in the last 15 years? Not a lot of action. It was pretty boring, I'll have to admit. All right, guys. See you next week.